This is SJ Doulis bringing you the Chaos March. We have Dolvorich in a Cougar E, Melos in a Ryakin C, Sudiborn in a Warhammer D, Wraith in a Shadowcat C, Vivisector in a Shadowcat Prime, Mr. Gray in a Bushwhacker Prime, Japal in a Owens Prime, Shadowcat F for Marlin, Omni in a Black Lantern E, Gnome King in a Bushwhacker E, and opposing them in a list put together by Burner mostly, Bob in a Solitaire A, uh, excuse me, this is not correct, um, Yeti in a Solitaire A, Viper in a Ryak in D, Deathwalkers in a Hollander E, Ivan in Thor Prime, Shooter in an Uller D, Chezer in a Partisan Prime, Silver in a Osiris E, Pabst in a Bushwhacker E, Yeti in an Oro E, and uh, leading them, uh, Bob in the Morgu C. Burner, what were your ideas when you put this list together on Death Valley? Marius, Marius, what kind of uh, strategy would you usually use on uh, TC Death Valley with uh, these kind of direct fire long range lists? Well, Burner, I see that we have um, the uh, defense team moving out together. It looks like that they are heading to the southern portion of the map, I believe. How do they have the defenses, uh, how have the attackers split their forces? Is there any um, logic? Uh, do they have fast assets together with slow assets or by tonnage perhaps? Serpentis, are you a proponent of taking air power on this map uh, strictly for scouting purposes? Marius, do you feel that a team of three or four battle armors working in unison for a team uh, could be an advantage on Death Valley? Okay. So, uh, Burner, I'm noticing that the um, defenders are looking to find a spot and hunker down. Are you surprised that they're uh, trying to stay in one position? The defenders have three GE, GECM assets, and uh, the way they're moving, is, is it a hold? It, it's a hold. We we have a hold at 64.45, um, so uh, f about four and a half minutes in, and uh, the two teams just right there. Uh, how do you how do you guys approach uh, handling a hold? How do you keep your team focused? Do you try to do anything?
During the hold, you're not allowed to move your asset at all, but uh, do you have your team members uh, utilize their zoom and their torso twist to try and find the enemy if uh, you are this close like they are? Do you guys feel that either team has an advantage with the positioning that they're both in right now? Invictus, Invictus was not in the field. Uh, he ran out of time, so we're okay. Who was the disconnect? Marlin? Okay then. This is Duelist uh, Marlin, are you having any issues getting back on? Actually, in this particular case, uh, I'm going to request that you use a harasser, please. Has it already despawned? Okay, there will be two more loud holds. After that, we will uh, plan. After this, there will be uh, two more loud holds. If we go past that, we'll just play on, and uh, Marlin is currently returning to his asset and harasser. Please do not shoot it. Wait, wait, wait for my signal until the mastery begins. Wait for my signal for the match restart. Fifty nine zero zero match restart. Fifty nine zero zero match restart.
Now the machine guns are away. We're seeing long range fire. We have Deathwalkers and Bob taking the brunt of it. Uh, nothing that's going to do too much damage right now, but they really cannot lose that uh, Morogu. They're shooting down all the LRMs. We have the PPCs moving out. Uh, Marius, would you be having the defenders keep this position or move? They're splitting... They're splitting Yeti off to uh, try and scout a bit to make sure they don't get flanked. And now the defenders are splitting up a little bit. The LH team continue, the attackers continue to have their team split off. And uh, there will be no granted hold since we've had first contact. No more holds, first contact. Plan. No more holds, play on. Those lambs working overtime, Marius. They are... We have a kill. Omni is down. The advantage uh, certainly going to the defenders at this moment as they continue to fly LRMs and direct fire away. Defenders uh, moving a bit closer now with Phylexes and Bob. Bob taking a lot of damage now. Bob trying to take cover, get some shots off. He's in a dangerous position. Chez are now moving in to back him up. The attacker's team has now largely moved back together with the exception of two assets. They are down in ass two assets. One due to uh, D DC that will be eligible to come back if their asset doesn't get destroyed, and one due to a death. Uh, the two teams' uh, positioning now is interesting. Mr. Gray for the attackers, one of the... Yellow's down. The attackers uh, have one of the best drop commanders in the business, and Mr. Gray, and he, uh, I was just up in the channel that you heard, and he's working overtime to get them to focus. Right now, it's a bit of a, uh, a bit of a language barrier up there, as they have uh, Marlin uh, and I believe Star Wraith that obviously don't speak the uh, native Russian tongue, and so uh, the, it can always be difficult sometimes when you have to speak multiple languages during a drop. The attackers now moving uh, toward the back side of the base, uh, trying to get into cover and perhaps uh, push up. They've now uh, formed back all together. The defenders uh, continue to hold position in the uh, position either uh, north or south, up in the hills. Burner, are you surprised at the way this engagement has gone so far? Planetary, the Ashcom Defense Forces are now moving up a bit. Bob and Ivan, two of their best players, are uh, moving off to the right. They're having the tanks uh, move a little bit south, and uh, looks like they're moving now a little bit, Marius. Serpentis, in a situation like this, would you be targeting the weaker mech assets in terms of tonnage, or would you be going after the best players? Because as we see right... 
As we see right now, Ivan's moving around quite a bit and moving to defense. Bob is moving around to defense. And uh, right now, the defenders are shooting just about anything they can, uh, not necessarily focusing on any one target. All but now, Bob and Star Wraith are firing at each other. Um, so, uh, Burner, uh, in, in this case, uh, would you have uh, your uh, either team have an advantage if they move in to close the distance, or do you believe this is still a long-range battle? Bob and Death Walkers both down. Arguably, the two teams now uh, a little bit more uh, even. Uh, that's a huge loss, uh, everybody, for the uh, losing Bob on, on that tank. Shooter dead. And uh, now uh, I see the attackers really focusing fire here, Serpentis, and uh, that can be a deadly thing if uh, you're being focused and uh, you don't uh, focus back. Phylixes, Vic Viper, and Silvercraft have moved uh, off to flank a little bit off to the right. They've split their forces. Marius, is this the right move? Yet he is now dead. Ivan now. Ivan now moving back, Chezer and uh, Drew sticking together. They're now trying to reinforce their uh, right side flank and then uh, perhaps charge. But uh, Marius, you mentioned that you saw an opportunity after the hold uh, for the defenders to go in and perhaps have a high chance of winning this. Uh, you feel like that uh, that lost opportunity is what ultimately cost them uh, the match here? Burner, is there a skill imbalance between the two teams? Would that have contributed to uh, any outcomes here? Now, I have no, no idea how much damage the defending team has taken here, but uh, I just realized that it's only a 6-5 to five advantage right now for the attackers on the defenders. So, as Marius mentioned, if they've been trading well, perhaps this battle can still be anybody's fight. But, uh, Burner, in order for uh, either team to succeed, what's the key for, you, for ELH attackers? And, uh, Bur uh, Burner, if you were the attacking force now, uh, what would your strategy be to uh, finish off the attack?
Now, uh, Serpentis, uh, we still ha uh, the defenders still have uh, Ivan and I believe Vic Viper and Silvercraft, uh, all veterans, and they still seem to have a decent amount of, of weight here. But uh, looking at the attacker's forces, is this all but over because the attackers have uh, uh, the Bushwhackers and the Shadowcats? And uh, as the ELH team now moves as a wolf pack, uh, sensing their 2-1 to one, uh, advantage in player numbers, now move in to hunt down the match. Uh, everybody, we're going to have a uh, tie 1-1 uh, one one battle. And uh, coming up to uh, map 3, uh, how do you motivate your team if you've taken the loss? And how do you, motiv how do you keep your team focused if you've just taken the victory to uh, try and uh, get that map 3 victory? Yep, that G Paul that's going to heavily damage Vivisector, but that also might uh, damage Drew. Vivisector and Gnome King are both doubled up on Drew right now, and uh, an explosion like that, Marius, is uh, they take take down Vivisector. You're correct in that I assume this match was all but over, but still, Drew going to take a lot of damage here, and that tank cannot outturn those uh, remaining Shadowcats and Bushies. Star Wraith. Star Wraith and uh, Mr. Gray, uh, two extremely veteran players, and uh, sometimes Serpentis, uh, when you have a big battle like this, it's hard to keep the comms clear and and uh, even harder as a drop commander to think about what everybody needs to do when you start getting down to two or three pilots left. Is it ever easier to uh, coordinate? When you get down to two or three players instead of uh, ten in your channel uh, talking and having to coordinate, is, is it ever easier to uh, do more advanced maneuvers when you have fewer people in your channel? Vic Viper still alive, veteran player. Ivan still alive, veteran player. Silvercraft, veteran. Uh, 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 Tank Drew, a veteran. Uh, but you're still facing uh, a very experienced ELH team. Uh, the attackers have worked with Star Wraith a number of times over the years. So uh, this could ultimately come down to how well the teams are able to communicate and work with each other in this. Uh, uh, Vic appears to be near one of the bases. Uh, Ivan and Vic's uh, backs are both out, so they have to proceed with caution. As uh, coming around the other side of the mountain, Gnome and uh, Sudibor are one team, uh, fo uh, followed behind uh, Star Wraith and Mr. Gray. I would argue, skill-wise, it's a toss-up, but I would argue organization-wise right now, uh, Serpentis, that uh, the attackers probably have better organization. And Vic Viper now dead, and uh, that might be enough to turn it again. We're running up against the time limit as the hold, I believe, was around 4 to 5 minutes, and we started the match at 69-0-0. Uh, it probably won't matter because the two teams would have to have a equal number of remaining assets. But if they, if the defenders can tie it up, is that a consideration burner to just haul ass and uh, try and make it a tie instead of a loss?
on a Well, in this case, as the attackers, would you only send in one asset to try and kill it, or would you send in everything you have? Is there is there ever a consideration to, if there's only one enemy left and four of you, to only send one or two assets to uh, try and protect something from getting destroyed uh, to use in a later battle? Oh. Now at this time it appears Silvercraft is the only asset left, Marius? For the defenders? Okay. So they are... Okay. So we will wrap this battle up and we just do. We are now tied. 1v1 in an interesting battle. Any closing thoughts uh, before we move to map 3, gentlemen? For Wolverine's Rebirth uh, and Smoke Jaguar, this is Duelist. For Marius, Gnome King, uh, who's playing, and uh, Serpentis, and Duelist, uh, and Burner, and everybody else, we'll see you next time on the Chaos March Network. Thank you for watching, everybody.